Please remember the brand from China, EnjoyBot. It will provide you with high quality after sales service and let you re-recognize made in China. We'll see how accurate that statement is by the end of this video. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Got another exciting battery test teardown and review for you today, this time from EnjoyBot. 24 volt battery this time, 50 amp hours. It is a group 24 size format, self-heating function. So this one should be fun. All kinds of cool stuff with this one. So let's get right into it. So when you purchase this battery, of course you get the battery and you get a packet with the user manual and all kinds of other accessories. So I'll open this and show you what you get. So in the packet, you get some standard stickers right there. You get a sticker for a window decal looks like. This is a window decal for sure. It's got an EnjoyBot uh, logo on there for like the back of your car. It's got a golf cart. I wish that was a golf cart battery. And you get a product manual, a user manual. And then of course, terminal bolts and caps. And this is a group 24 size format, 24 volt battery. So just for reference, your dimensions, you are 10 and a quarter wide, roughly six and a half deep and eight and a quarter tall. Your user specifications on this battery are conveniently printed on top of the case, which is nice to see. So you don't have to have your manual with you to know your specifications on the battery. So if you give it to a friend to use, or if you're using it in the field and didn't have your book, there's all your information right there. Here's the product specifications for the EnjoyBot battery. I'm gonna put a slide right here, pause, read it if you like. I'm gonna continue on. And remember, this is a self-heating unit. So the way this works, or is supposed to work, I'm gonna test it for you. Uh, if the unit sees the temperature of the battery below 32 degrees, it's gonna activate the heater. Now it does need eight amps minimum, so you have to have at least 200 watts or better of solar to activate the self-heating function here if you're using it for solar. Or charger that's capable of delivering up to eight amps just for the heaters, that's not for charging. So it's gonna take it from, say if it's at 32, it's gonna warm it up to 41 degrees before it shuts the heaters off and initiates charging into the battery. The battery also includes two convenient carry handles. So for your trolling motor, RV, off-grid needs, whatever you got, you know, easy to move it around and it weighs roughly 23 pounds. Now it's time for the capacity test on the EnjoyBot 24 volt 50 amp hour unit. I'm looking for 1.28 kilowatt hours minimum of energy out of this battery. I did bulk charging on solar, did final top off to 28.8 volts with a little power supply. You see the minuscule draw, that is from the energy meter. I'll disconnect the breaker to show you that the minuscule draw goes away. So re-energize the breaker right there. I'll disconnect charging means. So that is off. And the energy meter has already been cleared out. And for the load, I'm going to use the 24 volt alpha inverter powering a portable power station. So I will turn on the alpha inverter now. And then the load will pick up in just a second. Should be around 12 amps, 330, 350 watts, plus or minus to charge the power station. So the test is underway. 337 watts, 12.4948 amps. So I will leave it here to run for a few hours and see how much capacity is in this EnjoyBot. All right, there's the halfway mark on the EnjoyBot battery, at least based on nominal capacity rating. So keep on pulling, see what we got. Fixing to roll over the 1280 watt hour mark. So I'll give you that as we roll through. All right, there's our money's worth. Keep pulling. All right, we're about to shut off. My energy meter alarm triggered. Waiting for the inverter to hit low voltage disconnect. There we go, 1299 watt hours. And it dropped the BMS out on the battery. So I pulled it all the way down to low voltage disconnect on the battery. So 1299 watt hours. And it took it roughly two minutes to recover. BMS came back on. So there we go, 1299 watt hours, uh, about 50 and three quarter, almost 51 amp hours. So it met its expectations as advertised. Now time for the teardown. Uh, check it out, see what the heaters look like, the build quality, what kind of cells, BMS, and all that's going on. So, all right, I got the EnjoyBot most of the way cracked open. Same thing I always do, we'll look at it at the same time together as I crack the lid. So let me get the last of that glue off back here in the back. All right, there we go. All right, we got the cells wrapped in and shrink wrap right there. And let's see, wires, we got two number eights negative, 200 degree jacketed, 
and two number eights on the positive. 200 degree jacket, hydraulic crimp connections right there. We have some protective sheathing on the wires as well. So let me take the top off and I'll break the pack down a little bit further. I didn't know for sure till I popped the lid off. It appears to be a spray paint job on the, on the outside for the coloration. So let me, yes, we have spray paint. Spray painted orange on black plastic. But everything is tight right here, just making notes. And there's a cell pack out of the housing, the case. So you can see they use this white uh, adhesive right here that I just wanted to reference. This is how it was sitting, you know, in the battery box right there. And it looks like a JBD BMS. And we have eight cells because it's 24 volts. And then there's the heating pad right there at the base of the cells. So see that right there? There's our cell heater, heating pad. So I'll finish removing this, we'll look at it a little bit better. And then there is another view of the heating grid for the heating pad right there on the bottom. It is a glued down heating grid. It's the bottom of cells attached properly. It's tight, there's no gaps. And then let me spin you around right here. There is the control board for the heater right there. So we have a NTC sensor on the heating board right here and also a bimetallic thermal switch that goes up to the top of the cells there. So a redundant layer in case it overheats. Here is a shot of the BMS data right here as a JBD AP21S004, uh, 120 amp BMS, and it's got communication capabilities, even though they're not utilized on this unit. Uh, here's our temperature sensors right here, our NTC sensors. Uh, everything's good, everything's tight, nothing is moving, so that's good. We've got protective wire looms all over the unit right here, protecting all the heater wires right there, all the sensors. So I'll remove the BMS now, go down a little further into the pack. There are both the sensors, NTC sensors off the BMS right here in the same spot on the cells right there, glued down. Everything's wire loomed, all the balance leads are. Uh, the BMS was glued down. It's got a nice thick heat sink on this BMS. Very thick aluminum on this one, high quality. Uh, nice laser welds. There's no expansion joints between the cells, but I don't know if that's required on a little small uh, 50 amp hour cells or not, but just making notes of that as well. Uh, there's another sensor right here, NTC sensor. This one goes down to the heater board. So it's just sitting right here, you know, tucked in on the side, uh, just taking a reading from the case. I mean, it's close to the cells, but it's not uh, adhered down to them. Uh, tie band compression all the way around, corner guard bracket. So you have a very good build. So now let's check some stuff out on it, see how it works. So I got the NTC sensors pulled out. These are the ones off the cells. This is the one for the heater. I'm gonna check low temp protection first. Uh, these should be a common point uh, sensor, but I'm gonna check them individually. So see if we disable charging. So it should disable charging below freezing. So we'll see what it does. All right, it worked. Took exactly one minute and disabled charging. Good, programmed properly. Nice to see that, that's refreshing. Let me warm it back up there we go. And I'll just go ahead and check this other one as well right here to see if it triggers. It should, like I said, it should be a common point uh, NTC right there on the board. So this one should trigger on low temp as well. A minute. So the delay is one minute in the BMS. Both sensors function properly for low temp protection. And that's in case your heater doesn't work. Perfectly protected from low temp charging. That is refreshing to see. I'm gonna check the heater. So this is the heater sensor right here. So this should, you know, at 32 degrees should initiate charging. So I'm gonna put a amp clamp around the lead going down to the heating element. And then we're going to check and see if it works. And I'm gonna check the self heating function. I've got the amp clamp on the lead going to the heater. And the protocol for this battery is says once the unit stops charging below 32, the heater activates. So I'm gonna take all three of my temperature probes right here and simulate a cold condition on the battery of a low freezing 0C32F condition. So I'll put three sensors right there. I'm gonna turn the current up on the charger. We'll see what happens. Repositioning the sensors in the ice pack. All right, let's try this again. I think my ice pack was melting too quick, so I'm gonna put some cold sauce on the sensors and simulate a cold condition this time. 
and try to get this to trigger. So got the sensors in this insulation or foam rather, and I'm gonna give it some cold sauce there. And we should see the charger drop out and the current come up on the heater. Give it just a second. And there we go. Uh, charging stop going into the battery and then that's the current going into the heater right there. Works just like it's supposed to. Nice. So let me warm it back up and we'll stop sending current to the heater and then it'll go right back into the battery, the cells themselves. So heat it back up and there we go. Stopped heating, started charging back to the battery again. Nice. And the initial heating on that heating element is three to six amps. So we're right in line with what that heater was supposed to draw. So I'm gonna check the high temp cutoff cell level. So let me find the cell temperature sensors right here. So should drop out charging right here if they trigger on high temp. There we go. Took about 20 seconds. Not bad at all. Let me uh, cool them back down. We should initiate charging again. Perfect. Works like it's supposed to. Very nice. So I'm gonna share my final thoughts on the EnjoyBot 24 volt, 50 amp hour, group 24 self-heating battery. Um, everything works as advertised. Advertised capacity, self-heating, low temp, high temp, good build quality. I mean, I don't see anything to complain about on this one. Everything's put together well. A very, very professional build quality job on this one. It's refreshing to see one that is properly constructed. Good JBD BMS. I don't see anything to knock this battery on. So yes, I can highly recommend this battery if you're needing a 24 volt battery with self-heating. Uh, and at time of filming, this battery is $299. So if you're interested in looking further in this battery or possibly purchasing one, I will provide a link in the description so you can find this battery easily. I hope y'all enjoyed the video today. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all take care. Be safe. I'll see you next time.